Life has been evolving on planet Earth for three and a half billion years. Natural selection has shaped creatures to survive in nearly every habitat on the planet. And in the last few decades, humans have found that solutions to many of our technology problems are just waiting to be discovered in the vast library of life. In this program, we see how animals are locked in an evolutionary arms race. What can we learn from this? There's a continual battle between predator and prey, between trying to eat and trying not to be eaten. The biological arms race has also driven the evolution of natural materials, materials we've been harvesting for millennia. Ivory, whale baleen, or wool. But rather than just collecting these materials from nature, we'd like to be able to make them for ourselves, particularly the most elusive and most amazing, silk. It's one of the most incredible weapons in the arms race and could be very useful to us if we knew how to make it. This is spider silk. Spider silk makes the ultimate trap. It's almost invisible and incredibly strong. And spiders make different types of silk for different tasks. The web is light, strong, and sticky. Once caught, the victim can't escape. Then the spider spins a different type of silk to wrap up her prey. We know what the spider silk is made of. It's a type of protein, but we can't spin it like they do. It's not practical to farm spiders in large numbers to generate enough silk for us to study. They just eat each other. So we turn to other materials in nature that might be easier to use. And one example is made by a bizarre creature found in the depths of the ocean. The hagfish. Although they sometimes hunt for prey, they're often found scavenging on a carcass on the seabed. They're usually the first to arrive, and if they can, they'll try to eat the carcass from the inside out. Hagfish are not, at first sight, very attractive creatures. They have one enthusiastic fan in scientist Eddie Kisfaludi. First, he must collect them using ripe dead fish as bait. He lowers his trap to the bottom, filled with stinking rotten mackerel to tempt the hagfish. The trap hits the bottom 70 meters down and the hagfish arrive immediately. They're more interested in the dead fish than the danger of the trap.
When Eddie retrieves the hagfish from the trap, they come with something that wasn't there before. Slime. Lots of it. And it's the slime that Eddie's interested in. So, where's the slime coming from? If we can lift it up just a little bit, you can see these little white pores on the side of the animal. They're just, they're right along there. And there's a protein that comes out of that. When it hits the seawater, it expands to huge volumes and it can turn a small tank like this into slime in just a few seconds. So why do hagfish make so much slime? Simple, for defense. The hagfish just slimes its attacker. The slime expands into the predator's mouth, clogging gills and leaving it gagging. And the hagfish just goes back to feeding. No other fish in the ocean has this ability to basically slime its predators and escape, leaving the shark or fish completely repulsed. One hagfish produces a lot of slime. But for Eddie to study its properties, he needs to generate a lot more of it. On the southern coast of California, the Scripps Institute of Oceanography is the ideal place for Eddie to demonstrate why he's so excited about slime. When the tank is full of seawater, the hagfish are poured in. And now they just need to be irritated by something. Below me is a tank filled with about 50 hagfish, and it's about 1,600 liters of seawater. And all we have to do is just agitate them just a little bit to see what they'll do, and that's my job. And the result is slime. Plenty of slime. Let me try this, we can just see it there. And that was just from a little tap from my foot and it just created a huge amount of slime. That is absolutely disgusting. <laughs> I think I got some on my face, actually. And now you can see it dripping off here. This is the protein. It's grabbed onto all the seawater. And what we want to do is really just get rid of all the seawater so only the protein is left. And the best way to do that is to hang it on these drying racks over here. We're just going to drape it over the side here. And what we want to do is just dry it overnight to be sure that all the seawater actually evaporates. And so we're just going to leave it just like that and see what happens tomorrow. Dried hagfish slime. It's what happens when you hang it for a few hours. All the seawater just dries right off of it, and you're left with this, this very fine filamentous protein-type structure. And what we want to do is just see how strong this stuff really is. Now, we've got this, this weight. It's about 12 ounces. We're going to slide that on and see if it's strong enough to hold. It holds that fine. We've got this big weight right down here. This is, this is a 15-pound dumbbell that you normally use for working out. This is what we use for anchoring the hagfish traps offshore. Just going to hold it like that. OK, 15 pounds, slime. And it's really difficult to hold on to. That is amazing. That is just amazing. It's holding this 15-pound dumbbell weight. I can barely hang on to this right here on the edge. 
That is strong stuff. Wow. Well, we know the limits of what hagfish slime can hold, but just those little filaments, it was just slime a few hours ago and it held 15 pounds worth of weight. Now, this is interesting to us because this might be a new synthetic material, maybe a nylon, could be something that we can make clothing out of, but this stuff is just remarkably strong. Quite amazing.